Welcome to Hype Train guys, today there's one a bit closer to my heart, this is Geography Now Denmark. My wife's husband, uh, father came from Denmark. So. Ah, right, okay, yeah. thanks for raising I know literally nothing about Denmark apart from it's in the European, well it is in the European Union still, it's, it's in Europe. Well, it's in Europe. It's part of the EU. Oh, I think it is, yeah. yeah. Part of the EU. don't know how long the EU's going to last, but it's... <laughs> no, I don't know. They're doing well enough about us, Kev, that's all we it's need to say about that. Yeah, I don't know where we're going to go in regards to some more reactions with geography now. What countries do we need to look at next? Because you've got to think it's about 200 odd countries probably in so yeah, far. Yeah, we had a couple of comments for like Indonesia and Asia and things like that. So oh, that'd be an interesting one, wouldn't it? Indonesia? Yeah, yeah, I don't know once he's covered. He's no. sort of working his way through him still, isn't he? So. Yes, uh, he's got some time to go, yeah, indeed. Uh, so yeah, let us know as always. Your recommendations of which country we should visit next in the comments <laughs> below. Yes. Should we go first? Let's take a look. Remember in the Angola episode I mentioned how I went to Denmark one time and bought a sandwich that was $21? Well, this was that sandwich and my reaction was like, $21? Oh, this better be the best that, sandwich yeah. I've ever had in my life. That is that. Uh, you got lucky. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie, Legos, Vikings, and Roll Roll Methol. We got a lot to cover, so let's jump in. Ah, Denmark, the link between the rest of Europe and Scandinavia. So much to discuss. Denmark is classified as a Nordic country, hence located in the Northern European region, even though it's kind of like the southernmost state in the Nordics. Full disclaimer, ignore Wikipedia. I'm going to pronounce the location names in their proper Danish context. Oh. So here we go. Denmark is made of the Juland, not Jutland, peninsula that connects to Germany in the south, as well as 1,419 islands. How? Of those, only 443 are named and 74 are inhabited. With the largest island being Shelland, not Zealand, which is not to be confused with Dutch Zeeland, which is not to be confused with New Zealand, although they did get their I name- I can't take it! That's too much information! It is connected to <laughs> Foon Island, not Finn Island, by the Great Belt Bridge completed in 1998. The country is divided oh, into yes. five regions, the capital being Copenhagen, located on Shelland. Copenhagen is home to a myriad of historical sites, Beautiful palaces, area, statues, though. residential units yeah, that are all the same like height and that. style, with pockets of colorful, quaint, cozy shops and cafes, and dangerous bicycle lanes that you are not supposed to walk on. Now this is where things are going to get a little spiced up, and by spiced up I mean freezing cold and covered in whale blubber. Denmark, for those of you who didn't Nosh. know, is a kingdom, one of the last surviving ones in in Europe and is currently under the headship of chain smoking Queen Margaret II. <laughs> These still fall under Danish sovereignty and make up the massive Greenland Island and the Little Faroe Islands. Both of these places are radically different from mainland Denmark. For one, Greenland is primarily inhabited by native Inuit tribal peoples that live on the island and is 80% covered in ice year round. The Faroe Islands are a conglomeration of 20 ish mystical, cloudy, windy islands that have this crazy looking lake that looks like it's about to spill over the cliffs. That is the crazy. Ocean. These two areas cool. have their own self governing home rule, otherwise only depending on Denmark for military, justice, currency, and foreign affairs. Otherwise, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, historically, they did try to kind of create an empire by colonizing parts of the Caribbean, Ghana, India, and then in the Nicobar Islands and the Indian Ocean, but they kind of ran out of money and ended up selling everything to other countries. Too bad, it would be awesome to see people in the Indian Ocean speaking Danish. <laughs> Nonetheless, mainland Denmark is kind of like a fast-moving economic machine. Let's talk about how. Land, now, when it comes to land makeup, to Denmark speak. is pretty is flat. Yeah. I mean, the highest point, Mullehoy, is only about 170 well, meters tall, and it mm. looks like this. Otherwise, only about 13% of the country is forested, including the tree plantations, and the rest is pretty much used for agriculture that can produce enough food to feed about 15 million people. It's about three times the size of their entire population. Good for you, Denmark. But one thing Denmark is actually famous for growing is non-produce plants, like grass, fodder, and Christmas trees. The highly sought-after Danish Nordman fir has been classified as the Rolls-Royce of Christmas trees and every year investors from Germany, the Netherlands, and even the UK jump in at the end of November and grab whatever they can before it's gone. Now one oh, thing you need to know is that like many other areas in the Nordic region, Denmark's weather can be quite dreary. First of all, Denmark is the only Nordic country that doesn't really get a lot of snow. Denmark is kind of like the mud pit located below the jet stream blocked by Norway and the UK. This means that even though it gets really cold, okay. pressure systems rarely cause snow. This is also pretty much why everybody dresses like a J. Crew fall fashion line model on the streets. If you're gonna get wet and freezing, you may as well look good while doing it. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, pretty much the rest of Denmark is just rolling green plains. Yeah, 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 so 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 oh, yeah. If we were gonna talk about Greenland and the Faroe Islands, we would get a radically different story of mind-boggling, captivating cliffs, bluffs, sea stacks, glaciers, fissures, icebergs, and oh, mountains. If you don't know what a mulan oh, is, God. it's not <laughs> it's this, perfect. but this. This mulan is large enough to swallow a school bus. 
But we'll have to save that for another video that'll come out in 9,374 years. In the meantime, <laughs> let's talk about the people. Now this is gonna get really fun. Denmark's people are really unique in their cultural, historical, and postmodern upbringing. First of all, the country has about 5.7 million people and is one of the highest taxed countries in the world. About 89% of the country identifies as ethnically Danish, about 11% are others. Some of the largest groups in the other category being the Polish, Germans, Turkish, Romanians, Iraqis, and Afghans. Now when it comes oh, to really? Danish culture, there's a lot behind it, but in a nutshell, Vikings. Vikings pretty much had their start in what is now present-day Denmark <laughs> and whom pretty much dominated all of the Nordic regions as far as New Finland in Canada to Estonia. Which is why most of the Nordic states and regions can pretty much understand each other when they talk. Danes, Swedes, Norwegians, and Icelanders can generally understand each other as they have the same basic linguistic structure. Sure, there are subtle discrepancies, but overall they can kind of get by conversationally. <laughs> Granted, there's a saying, the Norwegian and Swedish languages sound like dancing fairies, whereas the Danish language sounds like a dude with a potato in his mouth. By the way, anybody who wants to learn Danish, full disclosure, it's gonna suck. The J makes the Y sound, the Y makes the U sound, the V makes a W sound, the R makes a R sound, the H is silent half the time, a ton of the letters are never even used, and don't even get started on A, U, and- I was gonna say, because you just mentioned that, I didn't come here, it's not only is the language there, very difficult to, well obviously if you're growing up there yeah. it can't be that bad, yeah, but for someone like me and you to learn it would be a nightmare. Yeah. But this is sort of about the taxation there as well, because you mentioned that before we started this school and it's actually quite expensive to live there. Yeah, it is, oh, it's yeah. expensive enough to live here in the UK. Yeah, it's a very expensive place to go on holiday or even live, yeah, was, everything is expensive out there. Um, I've seen that wages out there are much better than I have not got a clue. Let us know what you want. What are your wages? Do you yeah. live out there in Denmark? Have mm. you been out there? Is it really that expensive compared yeah. to say other places in the EU? But I don't know because uh, I don't, you wouldn't really care when it looks that way because it is stunning. We did that Finland reaction and that looks stunning. Some of the places out there and Definitely. that is just yeah. like the scenery out there, the cliffs. What was it? That lake on top of the cliff. Oh, it's beautiful. The mountain. That's stunning. Yeah. Whew, I want to go there. Oh. I kind of discovered a little trick though when I went to Denmark. When speaking Danish, all you really have to do is kind of like pronounce the first part of the word that you think makes a sound and then just kind of like give up on the rest of the word. For example, Copenhagen, Lufstrand. I'm literally just listing names of places in Copenhagen that I've been to. Honestly though, you really won't have much of a problem getting around if you speak English. Over 80% of the entire country, mostly hey, the younger generation, around. speaks proficient English. So they, like they don't even need subtitles when watching American TV enough. shows and movies. Also, keep in mind Greenland has its own language that is completely unintelligible as it's an Inuit language closer to the indigenous Inuktitut and Yupik languages found in Canada and Alaska and Faroese okay. is pretty hard for most Danish people to grasp as it actually has more words rooted in the ancient Norse language and it's actually more intelligible to Icelandic. Back to culture though Denmark has definitely left its mark whether it's notable figures like author Hans Christian Andersen, philosopher Søren Kierkegaard or whether Can you pronounce his name? That's actually how you pronounce his name. Wow. It's not Søren Kierkegaard. Oh, it's or whether it be the invention of the loudspeaker or Legos or their love of handball, their impeccable architecture, love of cuisine. Noma in Copenhagen, by the way, being voted the best restaurant in the world with plates that feature live ants and moss. Yeah, if you're really gonna get a feel for live Danish ants. culture though, you mm, kind of have yummy. to know about Janteloten and Hugge. The funny thing is, Danes are kind of brought up in a social mindset that is kind of integrated into their subconscious known as Janteloten, which kind of translates to something like, you are not better than the crowd, which I know sounds kind of depressing, but it's really trying to instill a sense of equality and communal cooperation. Operation. Hugo translates to something like spend good times with friends and family and it's like a cozy thing. Of course Denmark is known for being ranked one of the happiest overall countries even though they are also kind of one of the highest ranked consumers of antidepressants as well. But hey they still pull off everyday life looking oh so good even if it's during one of those really loud annual emergency drills. Okay Christine explain what's happening right now. Denmark is testing the sirens. Oh. <laughs> uh, warfare. Yeah when we're being attacked by the Germans again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Uh, I'm really, really scared right now. Don't freak you out, little woman. Security basement. <laughs> Split, <isn't it? laughs> the Germans are coming. Speaking of Germans. 
Now, we all know that one person we're all kind of jealous of because they're kind of rich, well-adjusted, and have a ton of friends, and they're like kind of good-looking. Well, that's Norway. Denmark is a little bit rockier. No, but seriously, <laughs> for such a small nation, Denmark has a huge entourage of friends, and it's almost kind of hard for anyone in the world to dismiss them at a party. As a founding member of the EU and NATO, Denmark oh, has yeah. had a roots yeah, planted in diplomacy for decades. First off, Denmark generally gets along with Germany. Business between the Germans is a hugely integral part of their economy, and Denmark acts like the gateway to scale. Scandinavia for them and the rest of Europe. The US and the UK are incredibly close as both tangible and cultural imports have been established for centuries. For a while, the Danes even took over parts of the UK, which is why to this day the English language still retains hundreds of Old Norse derived words like leg, dog, and window. The closest friends, though, would have to be the Nordic countries Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Iceland. These four are without a doubt Denmark's closest friends, even though Sweden and them have kind of had more wars and battles historically than any other two states in the world. They've moved on and grown up. Out of the Nordic countries, though, Norway would probably be considered their best friends. Danes are obsessed with Norwegians and often consider Norway the girlfriend they took away from school. <laughs> in conclusion, Denmark is the rich, rainy rascal that always seems to show up on time for every party, but somehow gets all his work done in an organized, efficient manner. Stay tuned, Djibouti! Is coming up next. No, ah, that sells it. Sells it too, doesn't it? As we mentioned during the ep episode itself, absolutely beautiful country. Just like we just did the reaction to yeah. Australia, and you get to see how Australia. We, oh, I mentioned then there was like there were the happy go feel, you know, lucky kind of countries. So, you know, everyone loves Australia. Yeah. No one yeah. really hates them. And Denmark down to a similar, like similar way, don't they? Mm. It's a great place. So else and many more pictures of it. It looks fantastic there, but. Yeah, if you're going to go on holiday there, you need quite a bit of money. That's not a cheap holiday. But when you've got, as we mentioned earlier, when you've got like the landscape and all the scenery and everything, yes. the countryside yes. and going out all there, all, you know, I love all that. I really do. I, <sighs> I'm quite happy here, but then you think, oh, I'd love to see some of these places. So. Yeah, yeah, it kind of gets yeah, it kind of gets depressing sometimes. In more yeah. one sense, we kind of want to stop watching these because you think <laughs> I want to go there, I want to see that, I want to see that. But yeah. at the same time, you get to learn some stuff, don't you? It's just like you can yeah. go to a restaurant and eat ants. Yeah, that's a strange one, isn't it? <laughs> is, is, is that actually part of like Danish sort of? Culture. I don't know. Oh, or, or is that that restaurant just know. has a I thought it was weird enough funny going to, meal? I thought it was weird enough going to a Chinese where you can eat seaweed. Now I can uh, go to a restaurant and eat ants. And all in, all in Europe, oh man, and all. Yeah. No, well, it's not. Maybe you've eaten ants I've before. I've got plenty of ants out in the garden, so maybe I can rustle, rustle, up, rustle some. up some. <laughs> yeah, I love it. An ant in, in a bun. Well, yeah, anyway, uh, let us know your thoughts on Denmark uh, in the comments. So anything you want to add, as always, uh, Barbie can't always fit it into so yeah. a 10 minute episode. We do appreciate that. Uh, if you're still here, thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next one. Catch you on the flip side.